Hello everybody, this is Jasmina and in this video I'm going to talk about how you can deal with um, things when your birth time is uncertain. And I have to be a little clear about that and you will see what I'm talking about uh, as I go on. Now your birth date, if the day is uncertain, you can have a lot of trouble with um, feng shui. Uh, because this can change your day master and that can make things a bit difficult for some of the special things in feng shui. If you were born just after midnight, this is when your date can be uncertain. And actually, if you were born right near Chinese New Year, uh, the solar New Year, that is, uh, you have to get down to the minute uh, because you can be off you could actually have the wrong year. So that will really make a big difference in your, uh, um, in your, how you deal with feng shui and also the other parts of Chinese metaphysics. Now, one of the nice things is the subsector activations in um, feng shui, which are the more advanced ones, they only require your day master. So even if you don't know the time of day in which we're born, but you're certain about the day, usually things are pretty easy to work with. However, uncertain birth times can make considerable difference in your Batsa and your Qimin charts and how you use them. If you were born just after an odd hour change, it can make the birth time uncertain, although you may be quite certain about the birth day, the date. They, they state that traditionally the time of birth for determining this, which of course would be, uh, would originally have been for the royal birth, so they were very well attended. They considered a baby born once the head has emerged from the mother's body. That is probably not what is recorded on your birth certificate. It is probably after your entire body is outside your mother's body. And then sometime after that, it's not entirely clear. Uh, I've tried to find this out. Um, and it seems to even vary with what country or what state you're in uh, within a country. So uh, or even what hospital you were born in. So this is kind of hard to determine. So this is why if you were born only a few minutes after an odd hour change, you can actually think you were born in an hour that you weren't. And the Batsa and Chimin charts, they can, and what you need to do with them can vary considerably depending on the time of birth and also on the date. So if you're born just after midnight, that's also a problem, even though that's not an odd hour change. Now I have seen some practitioners use the Chinese lunar new year date to define one's crown numbers, but these people uh, tend to just use the eight mansions. They don't use Batsu or Qimin charts uh, in their feng shui analysis. So these, I, these people are more, let's say, sim, in, in some ways simple. I mean, they're, they're, let's just say they're, they don't bother with a lot of details, which is actually can still work because some houses don't have flying star charts because they're in between directions and this kind of thing. And then eight mansions may be all you have to work with. So it's not necessarily negative, but the traditional way of doing it is to use the Chinese solar New Year date, and that's what I use. And you can still use eight mansions with this. Now, I happen to fall into both categories of uncertainty. I was born between Chinese lunar and Chinese solar New Year, and I was born just two minutes after an odd hour change. So I still don't know which hour is more appropriate for me, or which one is one I should really use. When I look at the properties in uh, the, especially the Qimin chart, I don't know enough about Batsa to analyze that. Uh, 
it I seem to have um, properties of both ours, which actually may be true. Uh, it, you know, if you're that close, maybe you actually get some properties from one, some from the other. I'm not terribly worried about it uh, because I can I can deal with this. So there are other dates of the year that you have to be concerned about. Uh, and this is really for your Qimin uh, chart. And that is, of course, Chinese solar New Year and the summer and winter solstices, because that makes a difference in your, or in your Qimin chart. So uh, this for these, uh, these are the dates you generally have to worry about. Um, and the, of course, the most normal date will be on the 21st of these two months, but it can vary a little, but you need to be down to the minute. In this case, if you were born on these dates, you need to know it down to the minute. And uh, as long as you are certain about your date of birth, even the more complicated forms of uh, feng shui activation will work for you because they're largely based on your day master. Some are based even on your year or day animal sign, but that's okay even if you don't know your time of birth. So this feng shui tends to work fairly well regardless of what time of day you were born. The uncertainty in your time of birth might result in issues in your ability to manifest using Qi Men, and I'm going to talk about that in an upcoming video. Now, your guardian spirit is likely to remain the same, and it is um, because that seems to be based on your date of birth. But again, if you're not sure which date, if you're born just after midnight, then this could be an issue. But if you're not certain about the time of birth, the location of the sector where your guardian spirit is located could vary significantly. So if you were born on one hour, maybe it's in the east. If you were born, if you were born the hour before, maybe it's in the north. So that's, you know, you, you, you would then be using a manifestation wrong if you choose the wrong hour. And, or at least you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't be tapping into the easiest way to manifest. And uh, there's not necessarily disaster in that, but it makes it harder. That's basically why people would be concerned. So then the reason is, is when you manifest, you want to have your back in, facing the direction of the guardian spirit. And uh, this will become clearer in other videos what this is meant by. But it's also possible that your natural ability to manifest could be affected by your birth hour because you can have a different combination of elements and that can affect your natural ability to manifest. Just to be absolutely clear about this, I think most people know this, but each Chiman hour and each Batsa hour too is two of our standard hours long and it breaks at the odd hours. Now the first hour and the last hour of the day are both rat hours. So just, you know, from 11 p.m. to midnight the day before, and from midnight to just before 1 a.m. the day of, you are both rat hours. So, but the day will be different. Your day master would be different between these two, but you would still be born in the rat hour. It, the next one will be from 1 to just before 3 a.m., and that's the ox. The hour after that, from 3 to almost 5, would be tiger, and then rabbit. So it's in the standard order of the animal signs. Your natural ability to manifest will depend on your day master and a specific level of element uh, that you have in your elemental breakdown. And I'll show you what I mean. Uh, I'll actually have a separate video about this that goes into more detail. But this is true unless your guardian spirit is either chief or uh, the nine heavens. And if you have one of those, you can ignore uh, the chart that I'm going to show you. 
So this is the chart where you look up for your day master and then you're going to look for this element. So if you're a Yang Wood day master, you need to look at the level of yin earth in your elemental breakdown. And you're going to have to f be able to read these Chinese characters because every place I've looked, uh, this information is given only as a Chinese character. So you have to be able to recognize these. Now you can use the Joey app site. Uh, it, um, it'll be listed under the profile, which is on the bottom right of the second page. And it records the percentage of the maximum value that you have in your chart. Uh, and there's a maximum value that's a very complicated thing and I don't fully understand it. And there are several ways to do this. So this is a very complicated thing. The nice thing is you don't have to do the calculation. These places do it for you. Uh, the Chinese Metasoft site also does that. The Joey app site is free. Uh, you can Google Joey app free bots of um, calculator, I think. Um, the Chinese Metasoft site has free trials, but they're not terribly expensive. So, uh, and they're useful for other things too, which I will be talking about, uh, including the, the um, three victories. And uh, this section in the Chinese Metasoft site is below your Batsa. It has some blue and red bars, and they re represent different people's analysis methods. And they're given as a percentage of the total elements. So these numbers will look very different from one another, but it really doesn't matter. As long as your level is above zero of whatever element you're looking for, then you have some natural ability to manifest. And of course, the larger it is, the stronger it is. But of course, if your guardian spirit is the chief or uh, nine heavens, then you have a pretty high level. For the nine heavens, you have to be able to envision what you want. That's the way to connect to nine heavens. With the chief, you can see it in your mind, you can speak it, it's uh, more versatile. If you find that your natural ability to manifest is low, you will need more practice. Now manifestation is really talking to your subconscious, just like affirmations are. And in general, you want to start with small things, especially if you have a very low level. And uh, then there's some examples. Let's say you have an upcoming appointment and you try to manifest smooth traffic. That's a pretty simple way um, to do this. Uh, and uh, there's, a, there's another thing that at least occurs in our life. Um, there's a restaurant that we go to. Uh, sometime it's very busy. Sometime it's, you know, almost empty. Uh, and if you're planning on a next time you're going to go out to eat, uh, then you can perhaps manifest that the business isn't terribly busy. You don't want them to be empty because that hurts the business. But if it's really busy, it takes a long time to get your food. So, you know, you can you can say you want it to be OK enough so that they can earn money, but yet you get your food fast. And another really good thing is manifesting that your boss is in a good mood if you have a presentation or you have to meet with him. That is another good manifestation. And these are relatively small things. And once you are able to do that regularly, then you move on to bigger things. Now, my natural ability to manifest is actually at 0%. My elemental strength is zero, and I do not have the, uh, the chief or the nine heavens as my, um, as my guardian. Now, the thing is, is I'm not sure if this is manifestation or intuition, and that's because my animal, my, not my animal, my guardian spirit is the snake. And that has some level of intuition. And I have seen this, um, especially in driving. I've had accidents happen behind me, in front of me, 
but they don't block me. Uh, and, and even one time I avoided a really serious accident um, that might have even killed me. Uh, when I was 18, I was sitting at the only traffic light in the whole county. And uh, it's a very small town, so that's why. Uh, and nobody was behind me, which is pretty common. And the light turned green, and I just sat there, um, just looking at the green light. And then somebody in a big pickup truck came barreling through the intersection, coming from my left. I'm in the U.S., so I'm on the left side of the car. He would have T-boned me where I was sitting. I'm not sure I would have survived that. And... I just sat there looking at the light and just going, hmm, I don't feel like going, kind of. I mean, I just can't explain why. That is where I see it the most. And I do think that is the snake. I really don't think that's my manifesting because, you know, I, I didn't manifest that day to not get in an accident. I assumed I wouldn't. Now, you need to look at your luck pillar, too. And uh, that can help you if you have an element at 0% in your natal chart, your luck pillar might have the element you need. And then that luck pillar, you have a better chance of manifesting. So, you know, don't despair if you have 0% like me. You can still make this work. Now, it is how important it is um, to know both your birth time and date actually depends on your needs. If you want to know more about yourself or you want to use manifestations, then you need both your time and date of birth. And, uh, and, and this is really only important for people born right after midnight or after an odd hour change. And, and that's what I'm talking about. The, you, knowing yourself is basically Batsa or Chi Men, and manifestations is Chi Men. So if you only wish to use Feng Shui, then certainty about your date is crucial. The time is not nearly as crucial. So this is only important for people who are born just after midnight or on uh, the Chinese Solar New Year Day. Uh, you have to be down to the minute in that case. Most of the even advanced practices in feng shui use the day master at most, or sometimes they use the year or animal um, sign. And so the hour is unimportant. And that's why if you only worrying about feng shui, don't worry too much about your time of birth. If you are interested in knowing more about your batsu or your chi men, uh, a botsomancer can actually help you determine the date and time of your birth but based on what has happened in your life and on uh, your personality. Uh, but this, uh, I'm not a botsomancer. I know very little about botsa, so I can't help here. But there are plenty of people out there that can. But that's only if you really uh, need to. Uh, need some really serious manifestation because you've got something big going on right now and you don't have time to figure out which you are by practicing manifestation. So that's basically it. I'd like to thank you for watching. Please feel free to contact me here or leave a comment uh, and I'll get back to you. And uh, I also have a website that gives more explanation about what I do and various things uh, that is useful for you. So um, if you subscribe, I do have regular new videos and monthly videos too. Thank you again for watching.